from Upstate and the Catskills on my dead end road. Coming back to the city is so startling, especially in the morning rush hour with all the trucks and the honking. But it's also fun to come back to the liveliness of the city, especially as it's turning into springtime. But I wanted to sit down and have a chat with you guys just about some changes that I've been wanting to implement in my life. I'm turning 27 this month, which I feel like I'm finally reaching an age that I feel like I've been for like the last 10 years, which is maybe a little naive. But as a kid, I just always wanted to be an adult. As a teenager, making my own money and being able to make my own choices was one of the most important things and I guess I just had a really strong desire for autonomy and independence and I always thought the more like adult things were really fun and they never really freaked me out that much I don't know if any of you guys can relate to that but something that I've really been thinking about in the last couple months is that I want to implement some rigidity back in my life which I feel like it's probably been like five years ago at this point that was when I was the most rigid person ever. I followed a very strict plant-based diet. I was crazy about working out. I did ballet and gymnastics growing up, so I kind of already had those sort of habits implemented. I was bootstrapping my startup at the time, and I really never veered from my habits or the choices that I felt were the best for me. I definitely wasn't very fluid, and then I feel like in the past few years, I've become very fluid. I think I've been healthier and happier in my own way as well. It's something some of you guys have even pointed out but I've been craving some of that structure, some of that self-discipline. I used to be really obsessed with James Clear's book, The Atomic Habits. I'm still subscribed to his newsletter, and I feel like I've come to the place where I can really focus on taking care of myself and my body without going a step too far that maybe becomes a little obsessive that I've had issues with in the past. I've definitely been focusing on eating well and intuitively, but not too junky. And I think I've found new healthy ways of exercising that are a bit more activity-based and based in fun rather than rules and Coming from like gymnastics and ballet, I think that's a little bit hard because those are so structured. I've been doing lots of snowboarding, cycling now that the weather's warming up. I'm back into yoga and some Pilates here and there, some running too, and it's been really fun. One habit that I truly have stuck to for the past year is drinking my AG1, who I'm so happy is the sponsor of this video. If you aren't familiar with AG1, AG1 is a daily foundational nutritional supplement that supports whole body health. I love that it comes as a powder that you drink instead of taking multiple pills. I feel like that was always my roadblock in the past from getting my daily nutrition. Most mornings I just drink it in a bit of cold water. Occasionally I'll add some ginger or citrus and it adds a really nice flavor. It has a sort of sweet vanilla taste, maybe the slightest bit fruity. I find it really refreshing and it's something that I look forward to in the morning and we're paying customers ourselves in this house. Every scoop of AG1 contains vitamins and minerals optimized to support whole body health, including the gut, brain, and immune systems. I've definitely noticed improvements in my gut health since drinking AG1, and I also noticed that I don't need as much caffeine or coffee. So every scoop or serving of AG1 contains vitamin and minerals, pre and probiotics, stress adaptogens, antioxidants, digestive support, and also superfoods and mushrooms. It's also free of gluten, dairy, added sugars, and any animal byproducts. If you'd like to give AG1 a try for yourself, you can head to the link in my description box below and they're actually offering something special for you guys. You can get five free travel packs of AG1 with your first purchase. They're great if you have any upcoming spring and summer travel planned. And they will also offer you a one-year supply of their vitamin D3 and K2 drops. So make sure you take advantage of that. And thank you so much to AG1 for sponsoring this video. I just got two of the most beautiful bags on loan from Rebag. They've been loaning me bags seasonally for a little while now. And here are the most recent ones I've picked out. I've had my eye on this matte black Dior saddle bag for a while now. Saddlebags are such a fun piece, but this one is the only one that I feel like is truly my style. And I love when there's a really classic style designer bag that also will come out with something like this that's really edgy. It really fills my goth girl heart. I also don't normally go for these more intense logo bags. This one I feel like is a bit more muted just because it blends into the bag, but I also got this Balenciaga chain pouch bag. I didn't know it had this big belt strap, but it has this chunky antique silver chain, and this is a more fun bag. I always want a white bag, but I'm not sure if I would ever purchase one, so it's fun to try it out. I think I want to style this one today. <laughs>
party today, so excuse the appearance, but I wanted to have a bit of a sit down and catch up with you guys. Monday's currently in my lap, as you can tell, even though she's way too big to be up here. I'm sitting at her new table, which you just saw me put together. I still need to do some rearranging and styling, but I have been needing a workspace in this apartment so bad we've had this spot for almost a year now and i just haven't had a desk or table to work at because it is a bit of a smaller space and i didn't really think there was room for one i was thinking i would do like a wall desk at some point here but a lot of those that i liked were quite expensive and i found this table for under a hundred dollars on amazon it's definitely not like the nicest quality thing ever but it's pretty good for the price and it's the right size and i have somewhere that i can stick my computer and ideally somewhere where this lady isn't glued to me, but we're still working on that. I wanted to talk about dog stuff for a second. Dogs are such a big part of my life, which I think a lot of you guys know. I'm sorry if you're not very into pets, animals, but I do just share my life with you guys. And oh my God, since we adopted Monday, my life has become so much more stressful. She still brings joy and I'm not regretful but she is a huge huge challenge we adopted her when she was still quite young I think she was like almost five months old at the time four and a half months something like that and if you've followed me for a while you know I have another adult dog that's actually the same breed Laszlo he is three years old and I really believe he is my soul dog. He is the sweetest boy ever not to say that he hasn't had his training issues in the past and he did have hard times as a puppy for sure. He is just so gentle, so sweet, so emotionally in tune. We have such a good bond. He's honestly become pretty low maintenance aside from his exercise needs, which are definitely less than hers. She is a puppy, but he's just a content, happy, healthy boy. This one has some serious anxiety, mainly around food and separation. And the food stuff really comes out as aggression. So again, I say that she just has a terrible temper on her, but then she snaps out of it and is so sweet. Both of those things are things that we noticed within the first couple days of having her. Oh, Laszlo's having a nightmare. We've been seriously working on the training. Like, I think my life has re revolved completely around getting her in a better place. And honestly, it's been very stressful. We've both had bite incidents with her. Luckily, nothing serious has happened to Laszlo. He is the gentlest, sweetest boy. She definitely feels a type of way towards him when he's getting attention or food. We do all of the separation stuff to the point where they eat at separate times of the day and he can only eat when she's fully out of the house and vice versa, even though he would never bother her. She just feels very threatened if he is around when she's eating, even to the point of her still feeling on edge after the food situation has been removed. Two hours around mealtime, she's super anxious on edge and we really have to watch her body language or we might get ourselves in a really awful situation, which has been incredibly stressful. I think we've made some progress with the hand feeding. She really doesn't get anything without working for it. With tricks and obedience stuff, she's honestly so easy to train. She is a working line dog, so she should be. And we definitely make sure she gets her exercise and mental stimulation, but I think the most challenging part that's kind of a bad and good thing is that she snaps out of it so quickly and then becomes this cuddly sweet bug. They're always cuddling or playing together. They play really well together as long as food hasn't been in the situation recently. Her food anxiety also manifests as her eating literally anything and swallowing it whole. If she feels threatened or feels like she needs to, like something that's happened a few times recently is her swallowing like a large sponge, a dish sponge, whole and then we have to make her puke because that could literally kill her and the entire sponge comes up and it's very stressful we've only had to take her to the emergency vet once over these things and i feel like we're so on top of never leaving anything out but somehow she still gets a hold of things sometimes and then we're scared to ever leave her because i legitimately feel like she's this close to dying at all times by her own fault she has gotten a little bit better about these things as she's gotten older but it really has been such a challenge so if anyone else is dealing with a challenging pet with like reactivity aggression whatever know that i see you if anyone has any advice for me i would love to hear as well we have an appointment with a vet behaviorist this week finally i really wanted to give her a chance to settle in and really work on training with her but i feel like at a certain point we're not reaching her because she's so on edge and some days she's much more on edge than others and only so many triggers can be managed so if we can get her on a protocol or medication that can just help and we can continue our training that's what i would really like to do and obviously making sure that she's all cleared and healthy and 
this isn't like a physical manifestation of something else, which her past vet visits have gone well. She's also not spayed yet, which I am pretty anti premature neuter and spaying if you can avoid it. We're trying to wait for her until she's completely full grown, especially because she's naturally kind of an underweight girl, but she is starting to reach that period where she's gonna go through her first heat. And I don't know if her hormones are really messing with her. I think that's enough puppy chat, but if you guys have any advice for me, any good resources, like I've spent so much time trying to go about this in the professional way and also being well-versed on like dog body language and reactivity and aggression myself. At this point, not that I'm an expert at all. We really are so committed to her, but we can't have her aggression getting worse. We wanna have kids one day. We obviously owe it to Laszlo to protect him. I would never let anything bad happen to him. I don't want anything bad to happen to her either. I want her to be happy and healthy and feel secure. So yeah, that's my puppy rant update. I always know the situation can happen when you bring a new dog into your home. You don't know them. Dogs are dogs after all. But I think I really naively expected the experience of her to be similar to our other dog because they're the same breed and I know a lot of dogs of this breed and I've had dogs my whole life and I've always loved dogs. She's definitely one of the most challenging. I feel like I didn't get to talk to you guys that much when I was in the city this time around. I just got kind of busy with work stuff and then we were also prepping our apartment to rent to a friend. So I was in serious spring cleaning and deep cleaning mode, getting that ready for her. We're actually hosting the founder of Normal New York City right now in our apartment. She's stayed at our place a couple times and this time she's there because she's launching her first New York City market. She's an interior designer and she hosts a bunch of estate sales and she's recently started bringing a lot of really amazing vendors together for these seasonal markets. So I'm not sure if this video will go up in time, but if you're in the city, I'm gonna pop the ticket info below because if I was there, I would definitely be attending. And I know it's something that she's worked so hard on. So I wanted to plug that really quickly. She also hosts them in LA if you're around, and I know she's trying to host them in some other spaces as well. It's also been really nice to have someone that we trust with our home stay there when we're away. Just make sure everything's good and also make a little bit of extra income since we're spending more and more time upstate. It's definitely something that I have been considering and we have been considering wanting to do moving forward, maybe doing some trial runs, subleasing out our apartment for a few months at a time. I'm definitely still hanging on to the city by a thread, but I love it so much here. We'll just have to see. Also, since being upstate, I've impulsively dyed my own hair again. It's a bit darker. I don't even know if you can tell. Just been missing my dark hair so much, but simultaneously trying to grow it out and make it healthier, which I think it is a lot healthier. It needs a wash right now, but I have all of this new regrowth since I stopped bleaching it for the red. And it's kind of annoying because I have all these baby hairs that like end right here that are just like sticking up all the time and look like frizz but I think that means my hair is healthier. And seriously, most days I'm fighting the urge to dye my hair black again. This sort of cooler brunette is gonna do for now. Yesterday was my birthday. I didn't film much. I'm admittedly not a big birthday celebrator. I think just in general, I don't love being the center of attention. And my ideal way of celebrating is always just being with my partner and my dogs. 
usually somewhere in nature, having some good food, maybe a wine or cocktail. That's what we did. It ended up snowing, so we went snowboarding again. I keep thinking it's gonna be the last time of the season, but it's not. And maybe it's even supposed to snow again this weekend, we'll have to see. And then we went to one of my favorite restaurants in Woodstock. We both went there for our birthdays the past few years. It's kind of becoming a tradition at this point. The restaurant is called Sylvia. If you're ever visiting, you definitely need to check it out. I've never had bad food there and they have the best cocktails and wine. It's absolutely delicious. So it was a really nice chill day. So he got me a spa day and also some Tacomas for my birthday. And then his mom got me slash us a horseback riding excursion which is super fun it's funny i hadn't even said that i want these but somehow he knew and i got the all black pair i think they're kind of gonna fill the space for these other boots that i have which i have here actually i'll show you i got an older pair of fry engineer boots which i really like but sometimes they feel a little bit too masculine for me like i don't feel that comfortable wearing them unless I'm wearing like a dress or a skirt. And he's having a bit of a heel and pointed toe. I just feel it can be styled in a lot of different ways. They're a bit more versatile, so I'm so excited to wear those. Definitely been on a bit of a fashion no buy recently. I've been saving as much money as possible for our renovations for this place, although it doesn't feel like I'm making any progress because we keep having these unexpected things come up, which is a part of home ownership, but they've all been really expensive issues. Like our heating fully broke, our garage flooded. I don't even think I've shared any of this stuff on YouTube. It's been a lot of back and forth and temporary fixes until we sort out what we properly need to do to fix the issue. We've just gotten several differing opinions and I've been dying to do more cosmetic work to this place. I feel like I haven't really gotten my hands dirty recently. I mean, we did like popcorn ceiling removal and we redid all of the exterior paint at the end of last summer and early fall. I haven't done much since then and there's still so much that I wanna do. I swear when I'm just sitting in this house, sometimes my brain is just going crazy with all the ideas. Sometimes almost in a compulsive way, if I'm being completely honest, but I'm really trying to be financially responsible and not get too obsessed with ideas and make the right decisions. But I think with the weather warming up, I can definitely get my hands dirty again with some DIYs, which I'm really excited to do. And just make some overall like detail improvements with the house, lighting. And hopefully nothing else drastic goes wrong in the process. But with all of the fashion no buy stuff being said, I have accumulated some really beautiful pieces that I've recently gotten gifted. That I want to share with you guys, I've definitely been craving some freshness in my wardrobe. I've randomly gotten a lot of shoes recently. I love this brand. It's called Social Work. I think a lot of you guys would really love it as well and their new collections are so cool. I've had my eye on these shoes from them posting them on social media so when they sent them to me I genuinely freaked out. They're also one of the very rare occasions that I will accept gifting from a brand without picking it out myself because you know I'm picky. But they sent these furry pointed toe mules. Oh my gosh. I think they also make like a heeled version and they also make a non furry version. But I think the furry ones are so cool. They're like a much more me take on the Gucci mules that were all the rage like in 2016, I think. Such a good spring and fall shoe. They also sent over these platforms, which are really fun. Definitely a little bit out of my comfort zone. Surprisingly, quite comfortable. Then I got some basics from the brand Cotton. I actually wasn't super familiar with their store before, but I loved a lot of their styling on the site and they had some really great pieces. Checked out their women's. 90s tee in black. It's ripped. Surprisingly, I don't have any sort of fitted t-shirts. Most of mine are like vintage oversized or from my own brand and more oversized. That'll be a really nice basic to have around. And then I've been wanting some white pants. They have these nicer white sweats from a Goldie that I wear constantly and it's made me want either like some white jeans or white trousers. When I saw these on their deck, I felt like I had to have them, and they are their women's plaza trousers, I think. Definitely need a steam, but they're just an oversized cream trouser, but they're not too formal. These are going to be such a great spring and summer pant, and you'll definitely see me wearing them soon. And then lastly, Karyuma sent me a pair of sneakers. If you're not familiar with them, they are a sneaker and skate brand that focuses a lot on ethical manufacturing and sourcing, sustainability in general. I've never tried out any of their shoes, 
admittedly because a lot of them have like lime green logos on them but they recently released these all blacked out suede sneakers i have this oxidized silver hardware which is what i always wear and listen i'm not a huge sneaker girl but these definitely fit my vibe and it's always nice to have a pair around that's all i have to show you i'm sure you'll see me styling some of these pieces in some future videos or on reels and tiktok will tiktok actually be banned We'll have to see. I honestly hope not. Selfishly, I really like consuming content on that platform and I also find it fun to make content over there. It's my smallest platform but it just feels easy and fun and it's such a good search engine and learning tool for me was learning about renovations and everything. It'd be a real shame to lose that but it would also probably be good for my attention span. Now it's the weekend, I'm gonna be around here getting some work done, some fun work. If you're subscribed to my newsletter, you probably already got a heads up for this. Or if you're new here and you're wondering what the heck I do for my actual job, because it's not just social media, I have a clothing brand, Stadtspillette. We make sustainable basics, I try not to shove it down your throat on my platforms all the time. In the last five years, I've also been dealing with some ownership issues, my ex-boyfriend still owns 50% of the business, and we've been in the process of recalibrating how we're gonna run things because he's not an active member in the business but in short through our business i am working on a secondhand marketplace that's just going to be a separate tab on our site in addition to the pieces that we design and produce we're going to be selling a mixture of secondhand pieces from our previous collections that are sold out that we're not making anymore we use a lot of dead stock fabric so a lot of times we can't reproduce pieces very easily at least. And there's definitely some pieces that I get questions about all the time, so I've been trying to source them to have on the site. The fun sort of new work for me is sourcing vintage and curating a nice selection of sort of one of one products, venturing into new categories with shoes that we can also sell on the site. So I've been spending a lot of time here upstate trying to do sourcing, a lot of time online trying to do sourcing, and it's been really, really fun. I think the first drop of that will be sometime next month. I'm trying to get everything together so it can happen then we'll have to see i need to find some more men's stuff because we are a unisex brand and most of the stuff i found right now is women's or smaller men's sizes so i need to find some bigger sizes and we'll have to see but that's my plan for this weekend you guys are going to see me next week with another video i'm wanting to experiment a little bit more with like sit down style videos that are more focused on a topic i still want to do vlogs but I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. I'm gonna wrap this up because I've been chatting for way too long. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you super soon. Bye.